TV20. We are Cleveland. Thanks for tuning in to this TV20 special feature. I'm your host, Sierra Nelson, here with author of Giving Up is No Option, Your Purpose is Calling, Nathan Phillips. Yes. Thank How are you, you doing? Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on your first book, uh, awesome educator, uh, motivator, and Giving Up is No Option, Your Purpose is Calling. This book is about uh, connecting with your passions in life and uh, your purpose for being here on yes. this earth. Give me some of your background and the yes. book's background. My background, uh, start off at a young age, tore up from the floor up. Uh, you know, my, my, my dad, you know, was killed by the age of six. My mother died of a heart attack in mom's oh, wow. uh, by the end of high school. Uh, became hooked on alcohol and drugs and eventually homeless and suicidal. Now, this was all through uh, completing high school, attending college doing what I knew I needed to do because my mother wanted me to do it, but still being stuck in that rut and, and hurting. And it, it happened really in, you know, 1997, everything, the bottom had fell out okay. and, you know, was grateful because I thought I was dying due to a substance. Came to him, was disappointed. And I said, you know, God, I, I want my life back. And I'm going to be honest with you, God told me that, you know, no, nah, you don't want your life back. That one's messed up. That one's broke. Mm. I got a new one for you. Oh, I like that. And from that day forward, you know, I went through some things that helped me get to that point. But from that day forward, I had the mentality that I wanted to give instead of take from the world. Mm -hmm. I wanted to give and just be of service. So I joined AmeriCorps, did two years of AmeriCorps, America's Promise Fellow. And my career ladder just grew from there. You know, from, from there, it was just, and it was all after out of After you started a, giving. After I started giving and having that mentality and help started coming and I found my purpose in what I started to like to do and helping youth and adults and training and speaking and it's been beautiful. Wow. Well, speaking of beautiful, I love how you said, um, and as a Christian woman and a believer myself, I uh, like how you said that God said, no, I, you don't want that life back. I'm going to give you a new one. Yes. At that point, uh, what did you decide to do? Because I'm sure a lot of people out there in the world, um, it's just such a struggle to break out of old habits and an old lifestyle. What did you do instantly and immediately to change your actions and lifestyle? I sought help instantly because the, the life that I was living, you know, was going on a, on a, on a dow downward spiral path. And it was with the alcohol and drugs. I was in uh, outside of Philadelphia, knew I, I, I needed to live a better life, didn't want to do the things that I was doing. And it was going to kill me. In the program, it says we're promised three things, jails, institutions, and death. I was waiting for death because I had gone through so much through my childhood and situations. I'm not saying my life was like that messed up, but it was pertinent things in my life that happened that caused me to think that mentally that caused me to have that suicidal mentality. But the first thing I did was I called my sister. She was in Cleveland. I told her I needed help. I think I had a problem with alcohol and drugs. She said, I know you do. I said, well, why didn't you tell me? Mm -hmm. Said you had to find for yourself. Got back here, found some good help and got that together. And during that process, it honestly helped me to be able to just go through the motion of, of just, just living and just staying still. And, and listening to people and getting to a point where I could have a conversation within, with someone. I used to walk past restaurants, this is an honest story, and look at people sitting in restaurants having dinner and having a conversation. And it was a point in my life where I thought to myself, how in the world did they, could they do that? How do they sit still long enough? How can they look at each other and eat a full meal and have a conversation? That's how bad it was. Wow. Well, talk about uh, one thing you mentioned that was big is help and standing still. And something, uh, help is one of the things that you focus on in this yes. book, too, is a big piece. Give me the background of your book, because you say you can't get anywhere without tapping into that yes. purpose. Yes, yes. And the, the book focuses on uh, first having that moment of clarity. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I want to be a failure. We're caught up in six, search, six circumstances and situations where we, we get stuck. 
but we have these ideas. Life would be better, or if, if I was only doing this, things would be better. So I call that those moments of clarity where God gives us, he tells us and talks to us when we listen. Once we receive those things, because everybody out there has some great things that they want to do. Believe me, I've talked to thousands of people and the majority of them have some great things that they want to do, but they're stuck in per certain positions. So then the book, the book goes into identifying your purpose, how to get help, leaving the past behind, uh, self-investment, creating a larger vision, taking the initiative, staying persistent, sharing with others laws of reciprocity. So the help actually comes when we find our purpose and our passion, because then we're able to voice it. We're able to know what direction we want to go into. If I know and understand my purpose and what I'm passionate about, I can articulate it a little bit better. And that causes somebody else to say, really, how can I help you with that? And I've got stories on top of stories where people, I started doing work with youth and mm -hmm. create my youth program. No Limit Leaders, teach leadership skills, life skills, golf lessons, horseback riding lessons. Our philosophy is in order to achieve, you gotta believe and never deceive the capability of any possibility for versatility is the best ability. It's not to change who they are, but to add on who they wanna become. And that was my 30 second commercial. I didn't have anything happening. Created a program, it was closed. I said, next time I got involved with youth, I'm gonna put something together when they take their ball and go home, so be it. They can kick rocks. Started the program. Somebody, a uh, small woman in a coffee shop said, young man, you look good. What do you do? I said, my name is Nate Phillips. I'm president of No Limit Leaders Youth Initiative Organization. And I ran my whole thing down. Mm -hmm. Golf lessons, horseback riding lessons. And she said, how can I help? Inner city youth, how can I help? So it came to you. Yes. You I, said, I said, I don't know. What do you do? She said, well, I own a horse farm. I said, I wow. think you can. <laughs> in the golf dome with my one golf club, I heard that's where some of the biggest business deals were, were made on the golf course. So I bought one golf club at Unique Thrift on a Monday because it's half price day. <laughs> and I'm swinging that. it at the club. <laughs> and, and, and a guy walked up to me. He said, your swing's getting a little better. I see you in here. What do you do for a living? I said, sir, my name is Nate Phillips. I'm president of No Limit Leaders. And I ran it down to him. He said, you know what? How can I help you? I said, I don't know, sir. What do you do? He said, I own this golf dome. I said, I think you can. <laughs> and those two became my partners and helping me with my youth program. I was in a coffee shop one day and I heard two words, leadership and young adult. I went over and introduced myself, was trying to get a contract with uh, this organization, met these two women. I heard them say two words. I got up and introduced myself. I could not get into that door to get the contract to work with these youth that looked like me okay. that had gone through well, some, some stuff. Always. But I meet these two women that don't look like me, introduce myself. They say, can you help us with something? I said, whatever you need. Mm -hmm. Law of reciprocity. The more you give, the more you shall receive. They said, we have a contract over here. It was the entity that I couldn't get in the door. They were in the door. They brought me in. Now I was in the door and doing some great things with some youth. Matter of fact, out of public housing. And that was my goal and my passion to get connected with them. But I couldn't get in that door but focused on my purpose and my passion, God allowed me to meet people and people to come into my path that already have the avenue. And it works just like that out here. It says we're six degrees away, six degrees of separation. We are six people away or six situations away from doing anything we want to do in life. Wow, all um, because you're focused on the path, all the clarity. Because you, all because we listen to that message we know what we have in us. Is it a book? Is it a foundation? Is it a nonprofit? Is it a business? Is it a service? Is it something? I'll guarantee you it's always something connected with helping people or serving others. One other thing you focus on too, which is a big thing, and I hear um, other speakers talk about this, but you really took some time to dedicate uh, in this book it, to the subject of time. How yes. are you spending your time? And you actually have a uh, map in here yes where people have to take the time with this book and really yes. literally list what you are doing with your time how important yes oh is my that? Goodness. And, and that writing down your plans and your goals and that time. is extremely important it said and I'm a firm believer we only have one-third of our life to do what we say we want to do numbers don't lie numbers will always lie two plus two will always be four if I'm supposed to sleep eight hours a day and it's been medically proven that I'm supposed to sleep eight hours a day to be healthy eight hours minus 24 is 16 that's one third if I'm supposed to work because I can't be homeless and I can't be you know I gotta work, <laughs> to work that's to roughly eight hours in the Bible. so that's another eight hours out of the 16 that's two-thirds of the day sleeping and working now that leaves one-third of the day 
which now causes a sense of urgency. What am I doing with my life? A lot of times we say we want to do great things or somebody will suggest something to us and we go, you know, I just don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> and and it, we can laugh about it in that way. But when we think about it, we only have one third of our life to do what we say we want to do. So how am I how am I investing that time? How am I really investing that time? And it starts today. It starts right now. The first thing we can do, if you got a dream, hope, ambition, goal, and desire, don't know how to get there, just start Googling it. Google is a beautiful thing. <laughs> Google it and learn everything you can learn about it. Everything you can learn about it. Two young men went for a job interview. Both have the same credentials, same background. One went into the interview and he said, I really want to be a mechanic. My father was a mechanic. I want to be a mechanic. Guy said, thank you very much. Second young man walked in and said, I really want to be a mechanic. My father was a mechanic. I want to be a mechanic. And then he says, and I'm also fascinated with the, with the inner workings of an engine, with the, how the combustion man, uh, uh, manifold flows in through the intake valve of the combustion intake. And he starts talking about things. And the guy goes, wow, you really want to be a mechanic. Where'd you learn all of that? How long did it take you to learn that? And he said, I Google information on engines every single day. This is my passion. This is my purpose. This is what I want to do. So I spend an hour every day. I tell my friends I ain't got no time. I'm Googling engines. They laugh at me, but I love engines. Who got the job? Oh, you know, that second to young say. man. Needless to say. Well, um, what it, this book to me, and I'm looking at, I love this part. It says, in order to achieve, you have to believe and never deceive the capability of any possibility for versatility to the best of its ability. It's what you just said. Yes. I can't say it as fast in, as you. In order to but. achieve, all we have to do is believe. Believe in a higher power greater than ourselves, and believe in ourselves that we can do things. So in order to achieve, we have to believe and never deceive the capability of any possibility. Never deceive that anything can happen. The average person has 80,000 thoughts per day and 70% of them are negative. So we can kill, steal, destroy our own dreams, hopes, ambitions, goals, and desires before we even allow the next person to do it. But we'll call them a hater. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it's, it's, and, and then to be versatile... It, it's a matter of understanding. We know where we've been. We know who we are. Sometimes we think that's not a good thing, but it's a great thing. I tell my students and people I work with, don't let the suit fool you. I'm from <laughs> Kinsman. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So don't let, don't get, don't get disguised well, over okay, the clean. There's a, uh, you can relate to them. I can relate to them. Mm -hmm. I can share with them. I can share my life story with them and they can relate because game recognize game. And we build trust with people when we share openly with individuals and in this book the first portion of this book is sharing myself openly you know how my life was you know what happened to me my hardships but if anybody if, if I can come out of that state of thinking and that position in life and way of living and do what I do now which is phenomenal anybody can great well I love it and like you said two people always do business with or help people that they like and they trust they like and things. they trust um, Last but not least, I just want to go into, um, this book is for everyone. This everyone. isn't just for a young person in school. Yes. What kind of, the goal yes. demographic here, which you're trying to reach, but it, yes. it looks like anyone can read this book and take something from it. My goal demographic it. for that book is from high school to still breathing. Okay. Because everyone out there has something that they want to do. When I do professional development training with, with uh, uh, schools and everything and teachers and everything, and they're at a retirement age, I've had a lot of conversations that they go, you know, what am I going to do now? You know, I share with them all that knowledge and experience and help you've given over the years. Can you only imagine you turning that around and being a consultant to helping these young teachers mm -hmm. develop? Mm -hmm. oh, I never thought about that. <laughs> I go, you got something in you that people want. Now you just got to transfer that and change it into something you can still do that you're passionate about. Because obviously Absolutely. you spent 30 years in education. You're passionate about it. Now you just continue it in a different capacity. Perfect. Well, tell me how everyone out there can connect with you. How can, they can get this book. Giving up is no option. Your purpose is calling by Nathan Phillips. Uh, give us any uh, contact information, social yes. media information, how they can contact you, find out 
information on how to order the book, also to get involved with your workshops and yes. just get connected to you. Yes. The book is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I am having a my first book signing. This is an experience for me. So so be sensitive. I'm, I'm sensitive. <laughs> the the first book signing is January 30th okay. at 6 p.m. at the Shaker Heights Library on okay. Lee Road in uh, the upstairs room, room E, I believe it is. But it's January 30th, uh, 6 p.m. this month, 2014. So pretty much in uh, coming up soon. And okay. I can be reached at uh, N Phillips at N l l enterprise.com n as in nathan larry larry uh enterprise so n phillips at n l enterprise.com okay and then you have something on your no limit leaders yes and and i have a youth organization no limit leaders has the website no limit leaders.org and that's my youth organization that you know eventually once i get things rolling Part of the proceeds are definitely going to go to my youth organization because I've been doing that about 15 years, and I love it. That's part awesome. of my passion. Also, how much develop, is the book? Too? The book is fifteen dollars. Okay. Uh, yes. Minimum cost. It's a small book that helps oh, create worth big so much change. More than that, than that. Yes, yes, and I, and and, and that's important mm -hmm. because it's I, I'm I've, I've never been in the work that I do for the money. Yes, it's we a need small money. Price to pay for for all of this knowledge. Yes, all thank you. So, well, thank you so much for, thank for coming on TV20 and uh, sharing this knowledge with us. Make sure you go pick this up. Giving Up is No Option. Your Purpose is Calling by Nathan Phillips. I want to thank you again so much for coming on. I'm Sierra Nelson, and thank you so much for watching TV20. Thank you. This is nice.